So let's do some curves from equations. So I'm in the generative shape design and workbench of Katia. And Katia on the wireframe toolbar has a tool called curves from equations. So if I picked off on that, you have to enter three different equations, three different parametric equations. So this is the creation of curves from parametric equations. So I'm going to demo how to use this. I'm going to make an assumption that you have an understanding about parametric equations and how they work. So let's begin. So um, I'm going to start off with a helix. So we can see uh, how to get the basics of a little bit about parametric equations, I guess, thrown in there, but also about Katia laws and then also the curve from equations and then I'm going to manipulate some of my laws just to show you some unique st stuff that can happen with curves from equations. So I'm going to need three functions here or in Katia lingo I'm going to need three laws each representing one of the parametric equations from one equation for the, par for the parametric equation. So um, I'm in the GST workbench, go to the Knowledge Advisor toolbar, go down to the Law tool. In my first law I'm going to create, I want to name it something uh, descriptive. So let me call it, I want to call it sign of, let's just call it, keep, you can get more descriptive here. I like to get very descriptive whenever I do name my laws, but I'm just going to keep this one simple. That way when you create multiple laws, you can look at what's on the tree and know which one you're selecting. But I'm just going to keep this simple. This will be my first parametric equation, and it'll be a sine function. So I'm going to go into the law editor. I want to need two formal parameters. One will be a real number. The other will be a length value. So the real number, I'm going to select real here and then go new parameter of type real. I want to call this t. This will be my t parameter for my parametric equation. And then the output will be a length value in Katia. So I've got a new parameter of type length. I'm going to call this XT. It's kind of my naming convention here. but So that would be XT. So let's form this up. So the output has got to be a length value. So I want to move XT over. Let's go with we'll keep this, we'll keep, uh, let's go with a 25 millimeter, uh, let's go with a 10, I'll do it. Let's go with a 10 millimeter radius spring, which is going to be a 20 millimeter radius spring. So I'm going to go 20 millimeters. Uh, this is going to be the amplitude of my cosine, or this is going to be amplitude of my sine function. So it's going to be 20 millimeters, and then that's going to be times sine. And let's say that we want 40 revolutions. So that's going to be 40 times 2 times pi. So I'm working in radians. So 2 pi radians is 1 revolution. So I've got 40 revolutions times 2 pi, which is one revolution. That gives me 40 revolutions. And then right now, that's just a real number. Pi is a real number. 2 is a real number. 40 is a real number. Pi just happens to be a constant of 3.14159, but it's still just a real number. So I've got to tell Katia that this is in radians. So I type in 1 times, so I type in times 1 rad, which essentially takes those real numbers and makes them radians. And then I got to put in my t parameter. So I'm working with angles here. Katia, its sine function is expecting an angular unit, and so radius is an angular unit. If you want to work in degrees, you can work in degrees as well. But the sine function uh, spits out a real number. So it's spitting out a real number here, and then that real number is being multiplied by the magnitude in millimeters. So that's giving me a, a, a magnitude, a length value here which is making XT a length value, which is what it should be because uh, XT is set to be a length value. I hit apply, make sure there's no warning messages. Now just to show you, if I would have 
not put the millimeters on, it's going to warn me that it doesn't know specifically what my units are. Now it will default to millimeters, but I want to be very, very intentional making sure I put millimeters. The same here, if I left off rad, Katia is going to think I'm plugging a real number into the sine function versus an angle, and it will warn me and not like that too much. It would now it will convert to radians, but uh, you want to be very, very in intentional. So apply, that looks good. Now, typically what I like to do, because I'm going to create the, the, the second equation is going to be almost identical to this one. So I'm just going to do a control C just to make sure. So I'm going to hit OK. There's my, on the tree, there's my first uh, equation. So let's create another one. So find the law tool. This one I will call cosine. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Just make it descriptive. Got a new parameter of type length. That'll be y of t. And then a new parameter of type real, which would be my formal parameter, formal parameter for the parametric equation, the t parameter. So as before, as I said, I'm just going to do a control V to copy. I want to change this to yt. And this is the same, except of course I need to make this cosine. So the rest of that's the same. I want it to be the same angle. This is going to be cosine. I want it to be the same magnitude. Hit apply, make sure I didn't goof anything up, and looks good. So there's two, and now I need my third. So this is going to be um, the length of my helix. So let's call this ZT. I'll tell you what, we'll call it length. It's probably a better name, length. So new parameter type real, just like before, make that my T parameter. Uh, new formal parameter type length, we'll call this ZT. And I goofed that up. Let me try that again. That'll be T, new parameter type length, that'll be ZT. I do that all the time. Apologize for that. So, so I've got a ZT here. Now it's going to be times, I'm sorry, it's going to be ZT equal. Now how do I want, how long do I want the spring to be? I can't remember what I said earlier, but let's go with 100 millimeters for now. And then that's 100 millimeters times a T value. So T value is going to start at zero and go to one. And so uh, so the length of the spring would start at zero. The bottom of the spring would be zero. The top of the spring would be one. Let's see if let's see if Katia likes it. Then that is good. So there's my three equations that are the part of my uh, parametric equations. So go to curves from equations on the wireframe toolbar, GSD workbench. You should find that behind the spline tool if you're looking for it. And so I can come over here, and then for my x, I can select the sine function. For my y, I can select the cosine function. And for the z, I can select the length. Kt is doing its calculation. And then you can see my spring, spring coming out. This is great, right? But of course, you know, Katia has a spring tool. You can do that very, very easily with a spring tool but you can get more creative than just this and so let me show you uh, let's just build on this and what we have here so spring and that is a wireframe entity by the way so you can use that for maybe trajectory center curve spine um, threads you know if you need to spring if you need to let's go back to sign uh, the sine function and let's just get a little bit slightly more creative here what if I change right now it's a radius of 20 what if I change this to be 10 what's going to happen think about what's going to result when I do this and there we go that is a helical spring and maybe a more formal definition of what that elliptical spring may be. Elliptical spring, not helical spring. Elliptical spring or something to that nature. So notice the ellipse. And that's you know just the definition of an ellipse. I went back and changed these revolutions to just one revolution, one level revolution, and had this z height set to zero, it would be 
a an ellipse. And that would be a good way to create an ellipse. So I'm going to change this back to be 20. I want to get a little bit more creative here. All right. So I'm going to have some uh, scaling issues here. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my length down to, let's just go to 10. And you'll see what I mean here in just a moment as I try to get a little more creative with this. So this is going to be like a spring that has been squashed. So there we go. So now I'm going to take my amplitudes and let's make them one just for right now. And you'll see why in just a moment what I'm doing. This is going to, this is going to be a interesting looking spring here for a moment. Yeah, that is still an elliptical spring. So um, let's do the cosine. Make that one. And then start coming around a little bit better. better. And you can see what I meant by a scaling problem. But there's something I want to show. Right, so that looks more like a spring now. So I just scaled it down, just you know, shrunk it down, if you will. So here's what I want to do. I want to just change some stuff just to show you how to make this how to make this a little more interesting, if you will. So I'm gonna go back to sign and I'm gonna take out this one millimeter and let's replace that and just think about what I'm doing here. I'm gonna re replace that with a one minus T. Now right now that's a real number, so T is going to yell at me for doing that. So I need to put a one millimeter in front of it. Probably should have just left that one millimeter. That was where I scaled it down anyway. But notice I'm just adding a one minus T parameter here. And I'm going to do this for the cosine equation as well. Now what happens here? So remember my T parameter goes from zero to one. So when I start off here at the very beginning, it's going to have a T of zero. So one minus zero is going to be one. So my uh, amplitude is going to start off at one. It's going to start off at one. So this will be one times one. And then as it approaches to the other end of the ratio, which would be a T parameter of one, one minus one is zero. And then zero times one is of course zero. So what you're going to end up here having is a tapered spring. So let's give this a whirl and see what happens. And if I got, got to make changes to both, so it may look a little interesting, <laughs> at least at the beginning, which is fine. But think about it. See, notice how that's going to zero in that direction, and it's staying one in this direction. So that's, that's expected. So here we'll add that um, one minus T and and I could, oh forgot my multiplication and there's my tornado or my cone or whatever you want to call it so again that looks very very interesting could be useful again just some interesting stuff I want to show you how you can manipulate some of these equations and get them to be what you want them to be. So let's, uh, let me go back. This time I'm gonna, I'm going to take out, so I'm gonna leave this one millimeter in there because I need to use that for casting purposes. Um, so I need to make sure, so just remember it's the sine value, the sine equation, sine function is spitting out a real number. So I need all of this as the product to end up with a length value. So I'm leaving the one millimeter in there, so in, in that term. So I'm going to come in here now and go, let's just add a one millimeter out in front with a summation. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to hit apply. No warning. This is good. So now I need to jump over to cosine. It may get. It may look kind of interesting again as I jump over and make the other change. You can see a little shift down here on the bottom. 
and then same way here I'm going to add a one millimeter summation to sum all my results out shifted it over see that's the shift so notice how that shifted that shifted in both the X and the Y direction it shifted um, what I was working on there so again again just trying to make it interesting let's go back let's try something a little different here I'm going to take out that one millimeter actually I'm going to take out everything here and let's put in this one I'm going to try a let's think about this I'm going to put in a 0.5 which is you know, just a real number right now, minus 0.25 T times T. Okay, so, and then I need to tell Katia that this is a milli in millimeters, so I'm gonna multiply that by one millimeter. So what's happening? Let me see if I get a warning on this. Nope, that's good. So again, I'm starting off at a half of an inch T is, is, is going to start out at zero. This is half a minute. So T is zero at the beginning. So 0.25 times zero is zero. So it's going to be 0.5 times one. So it's going to start out here at a, a radius of 0.5 to begin with. And then T value is going to go to the other extreme, which would be one. So one times 0.25 is going to be 0.25 so 0.5 minus 0.25 is going to be 0.25 so it's going to go to a radius of 0.25 so in this example my radius is going to change from 0.5 to 0.25 throughout the sweep so I need to make sure I get this in both the sine and the cosine so I'm just going to copy paste Make sure I didn't make any errors. That looks good. Looks good. Apply. And then notice how my cone doesn't go to a, a point anymore. So let me change the length of this. I can make this something shorter. Let's go with four. So that's the third equation that I'm doing that with. So I'm looking like more of a of a cone, there's a name for that, I forgot what it is, Rolstrom or something to that effect, but that's a uh, nice cone looking thing, and then of course you can just adjust, I say just adjust, you can adjust these values, so notice I'm going from 0 0.5 to 0 0.25 here, let's, let's go from a 1 to a 0.5 and let's see what happens, to 1 to 0.5, so of course I've got a it's going to look interesting to begin with, and then before I make my cosine change, so one, two, point five. So oh, it's just increasing the radius. Um, let's put a circle in. So notice, just to verify. So notice I'm starting at one. That's a radius of one. Okay, so um, again, just let's do some more manipulation here. Let's let's try maybe four. Let's go four to two, or let's go four to one here. So four minus one. So four minus one. All right, so I find that to be interesting. You can do that little cone. You can adjust those values, of, you know, if you want to make it more elliptical too, but it just makes it somewhat interesting as we um, using that curve from the equation. So I hope that helps. Have a great day.